Hi everyone, in today's video we will be taking a look at Pointy Virtual Sand from Starwind. And just in case you're not familiar with Starwind, we want to be a vendor. I've really enjoyed working with uh, over the years. So uh, previously, and uh, they've uh, had this uh, virtual sand software that you could uh, run on Windows. They also have some uh, software here, like a virtual tape library. I suggest we take a look at that in a future video. But um, this virtual sand was previously installed in Windows, and uh, that was that was fine. You could still use it for vSphere and so on. I used it in quite a few labs in the past. But the new thing that got me really excited is that now they also offer this as a Linux machine. Now, what I've done here is so far we just have the one host, but the idea is that later on we'll go in and deploy two nested hosts. A nested host means it will be a virtual machine running ESXi. Now, when we do that, it will be two hosts because we're looking to have a high availability to be able to do V motions and things like that. Although there's just one single physical host here. Now, for a lot of those features to work, uh, you would need shared storage. Technically, vMotion could work with uh, non-shared storage, but then you're really moving all of the storage as well, and, and that's going to take forever. So I would really recommend to, to have shared storage here. So how are we going to go about this? Well, I've already gone and downloaded it. And so the first step we have to get done here is right-click on the host and say deploy OVF template. Now you could say, well, hey, well, how come you didn't put it into your content library? Because I don't really expect to be deploying a lot of these appliances here. So I'll basically go in here. We can see I have my Starwind VSA vSphere folder right here. And uh, inside, you'll see we have some uh, files here. And uh, you might be tempted to just select the OVF file. But um, if that was an OVA, we could have one file that would include all of these files. But uh, it's not. It's uh, the OVF open virtualization format. So we would need these files here. And in case you're wondering, OVF is basically a text file. You can sort of see that from here. Type of descriptor. Then we have the actual disk here. NV RAM from, from the BIOS. And then this MF, which is a checksum file, so that the VCA can uh, see that everything is uh, OK. What about this? This is actually the license file that I'll be using later on. Uh, that uh, was very kindly provided to me uh, by Starwind uh, because I asked them nicely. But uh, they actually do have a free version and they, I might even end up loading in that license at some point just to see. But uh, for now, let's pick up all of these files here. And so the first thing that's going to happen is uh, we'll basically go and upload these next. Okay, so where are we looking to deploy this? Well, uh, I'll just put it right on here. And we have a virtual machine name here. Uh, I think I'll just go with Starwind VSA uh, for now. Uh, we could keep this name here. So there's some uh, versioning number, something like that. Uh, but uh, let's just leave it like this, because what if we update it later on? Click Next. Which host? Now I, I just have the one host, so that's an easy choice. Okay, it's thinking a little bit. And um, I wanted to go through the wizard here. We'll, we'll have to go back and start creating some stuff in just a little bit. But um, let's let's get this deployed here for, for now. So we see here it contains some advanced configuration options, which might pose security risk. OK, so I think what they, they are worried about from VMware here is that, that these, these are apparently not science. But uh, I just grabbed these from the Starwind website, so I, I honestly don't really care about that. Size on disk, thin and thick. Uh, that's okay. I think I'll just let it be a fig provisioned here. This is uh, the shared stories I'll be using, so uh, that that's all good. And hey, why? That's 16 gigabytes. Is, uh, a very low volume. Then we have the end user license agreement, and uh, yeah, I, I guess I'll have to agree to everything here, otherwise uh, I won't be able to to use it. So we agree. Next. Okay, where will we place it? Place it on the SSD as always, because that's the only one I have. We could go for lazy, we could go for eager zero. It, it doesn't really matter too much right here. So I'll go with next. Now, this is what I was talking about. So notice here it wants three different networks. One for management. Uh, I'll actually keep that in this uh, production network that we've been uh, using so far. Uh, ah, no, actually, I'm going to keep it in the VM network. Uh, then we have. Ice Gassy. Well, 
I'm going to leave this here for now because we, we don't really have a uh, virtual switch or anything like that for this. And then we have sync. So I don't have these networks right now, but it, it doesn't matter. So what we'll do is we'll kick this deployment off and then go and create these networks and we can go back and adjust the virtual machine right here. Click get next. Okay, get a little overview here. That's all great. Finish. And uh, we should be able to see down here that uh, it actually starts the deployment. We can also see that here. So what do we then do from here? Well, I, as mentioned, we, we have the management network already. And uh, we, we, I guess, could potentially go and rename that eventually. Uh, that's the, the one we have right here already called VM network uh, with this one dot something network. Then we had the uh, virtual switch with the uh, two uh, dot network and then we have the uh, virtual switch something with the three dot network and because i'm only going to be using these for uh, nested virtualization you see there's, there's no nix because we go in through the firewall to get to these huh so what do we do well technically we could put them on here but uh, just to kind of keep things nice and neat i'll actually go and say add networking and what do we want well, uh, there's a few things that we need here. So um, first of all, the management network, um, that, that's already there. So but we, we don't really need anything for that. Then we uh, might need some uh, port group and we'll probably need a, a VM kernel adapter. But um, for now, uh, let's pick virtual machine port group. And I don't have a virtual switch already. So we'll make a new one. Then it asks for the MTU. This is the... Um, well, we, we can go and take a quick look just so you get a yeah, here. It's the back size here, maximum transmission unit. Um, so try and get some English here. There we go. Now, this is also what we call uh, the, the, the packet size here. And, and so for the normal frame length here, it's, it's 1500. If you go, let's say, 1501, this is technically jumbo frames. This, this can go all the way up to 9,000, by the way. So let's go in here and this little bit of an explanation here. I'll go and, and include a link to this in the video description in case you, you want to read a little bit more. Now, uh, since uh, we want the highest possible performance, uh, we'll set the switch to allow up to this. Uh, we still need to make sure everything is actually configured to use this. That's uh, another story. We'll click Next. And we still don't want any assigned adapters because it's all a nested visualization here. So that's okay. Next, a little warning as always, that's okay. It's thinking a little bit. Okay, so we need to give it some network here. Literally just call it iSCSI. Uh, let's call it Let's get some traffic. And we should have an additional network here. Now I would say I don't really actually need this one here, but um, I'll set it up anyway, because um, the idea here is in, in the lab, we just have the one physical host and the two nested ones will be connecting down. But if we actually uh, deployed this appliance here onto those two hosts, which is what you would do in a real production environment, you would want some synchronization between these two appliances if you're looking to do uh, synchronization of, of the storage. And you would want to do that in case you lose the one. So we'll, we'll set this up anyway, and we'll call it iSCSI sync. Okay, finish. Okay, we could uh, go and take a little peek down here and see. How's the deployment? So it looks like the OVF managed to get deployed. That's great. We'll go inside. Let's take a closer look at this virtual machine. Okay, so we can see some CPU, four CPU cores, eight gigs of memory, 16 gigabyte disk. We, we knew that already. SCSI controller is set to be LSI logic. Ideally, this should be para-virtual, but um, it's not really so critical here. I can't just change it because the machine is not going to be able to boot afterwards. So that's something we can take a look at how to tweak. So we wanted to keep this on the VM network uh, for the 
Second nick here, we want to have it on iSCSI traffic. And the third nick will want to have that on the iSCSI sync. All right. What else do we have? Not really that much uh, to set up here. So let's hit OK. And let's try and power on this machine. OK, so let's try and launch the console. We'll use the VMware Remote Console. Open that up. And, uh, it says Red Hat Enterprise Linux here, but I, I think it's actually running at CentOS inside. Okay, so the uh, next question, of course, is we see there's, there's two options here. We can go to this uh, host name or the IP address. Uh, it's pulled an IP already by DHCP. And uh, let, let's let's do that. So 1.191 port 9090. So 1.191 port 9090. Okay, we see the certificate issue. That's okay. Great. Looks nice. Okay, now default username is root and exactly the same as the password. So root and root and we'll log in. Okay, and we can see it's actually running CentOS, but that's not too different. Okay, so once we're inside, what uh, do we have from here that we can uh, do actually? Uh, well, let's uh, see networking wise, uh, do we want to keep that IP address uh, or do we want to change that to something else? Uh, I would say maybe I would prefer that it doesn't change this IP all the time. So let's see, manual. one because this is sort of my management network at this point. Uh, DNS, yeah, I can grab that uh, via DHCP, that's okay. Search domains, it doesn't really matter. Okay, apply, which means if it's super smart, it will automatically redirect me here. But um, let's let's see what happens if it uh, if it does that. It would be very cool. Okay, so yeah, it will break the connection. Yeah, okay, that that's that makes sense. Uh, so let's try and see if we can reach it now. Yeah, that works. So we can close the old tab here. Advanced. Logging again. Okay, go back and sort of double check. Yeah, okay, so we have to set up. Then we have the uh, network card here. <clears throat> and uh, if we go on back, maybe it makes sense. So notice here, this the, the management NIC is, is an Intel E1000. Uh, honestly, I'm not sure why they picked this, but um, we can we can go and change that afterwards. It, it doesn't matter for now. So here we uh, need to uh, get some IP address set up. And uh, what better than to go and do that manually. So this is an isolated network. So this obviously should be a network that you're not using elsewhere. Now, uh, I would suggest that we use, for example, 172.16.2.1, since this is sort of my first server device inside this iSCSI network. Make it a C class. There's no default gateway. Click apply. Go back to networking. And then we need this synchronization network. Um, I actually don't really need it, but I'm going to set it up anyway because I think it just makes sense. Uh, 16 dots, let's say 21.1. Okay, fine. All right. So far, so good. Uh, let's go to storage. And uh, here we, we, we honestly don't really see that much uh, at this uh, point here. We, uh, we just have this set up for now. But uh, what if we were to go up here and see what else do we have? And not, not so much power options. So uh, we have some performance profile here. Uh, okay. So let's see, we can see some, some different uh, options uh, that we could go for here. What's my running inside a virtual guest? Yeah, so that's that's what it's already set to. That, that sort of makes sense. So I think for now, what I'll do is I will uh, do a uh, shutdown. No, wait, let's uh, go to the terminal here, maybe. Okay, 
and uh, let's see here what uh, what can we do here yeah okay so it tell us, doesn't tell us that much so let's get rid of this again so we'll go back up to system so from this point here there's actually not so much more we can uh, do the next step would be to go and grab the management uh, software so we can actually start connecting down to this because this is more of a uh, appliance uh, management interface type uh, setup than than what you otherwise would uh, expect to to see from from the storage uh, part so if we go back up here we could go and say shut down delay no delay let's just shut down now so I'll kill this I'll go back to starwind and wait for this to actually shut down Okay, so it's down. So we could go here. And uh, one of the things you'll uh, notice here, if we uh, check these two that we were talking about before, those were in VMXNet 3, whereas this one is not. Now, that, that's something we could have changed during the deployment. Now now that it's actually here, it's it's a little bit too late. But uh, we, we could, of course, start replacing the NICs and things like that. But it doesn't really matter. This is just management traffic. so. It, it it really is not going to make some big uh, impact. Okay, uh, let's go and uh, power on the machine again. Just uh, want to uh, get to this point. So if we go back to Starwind here and download. Okay, so we have our little download here. Now this says Hyper-V, so I guess we could go down here. So the download is going here. Uh, you have to basically go through the little form here, but that's okay. I'll get to the Starwind Management Console here. Uh, so the download is done. A little USC prompt. That takes us to the license agreement once again. Next, next. And uh, let's see, what do we what do we have? So uh, full, no, uh, I would say a management console. I don't really need all of the other stuff because I'm not looking to turn this into a machine that's uh, hosting anything. Next, uh, let's see here, uh, request free key. Yeah, let's, let's do that. Okay, so it's going to the wizard here. Launch that up, give it a quick chance to actually start. Okay, here it is. So then we have to actually add in a server. Now, normally this would be localhost, but this, since this is only for management, I'll type in the IP that we uh, did earlier. Let's see if it will connect to that. It would, that's great. Maybe expand this a little bit. Next. Oh, let's see here. 800. Uh, so there's some difference in the build. Okay. So I have to figure out, I guess, if there's some problem to how, how I can get the new uh, uh, version of the, uh, of the uh, console here. So actually, let's see. 13813. So actually, it seems the. Uh, Server, it's a slightly outdated. It's just the console that's a little bit newer. Okay, so let's say apply key. I'll uh, load the one in I had from my uh, downloads right here. There we go. Click OK. Storage pool is not configured. Makes sense since it's a fresh installation right here. Yes. Okay. So what is it that we uh, want to do? Well, we, we, we don't really have much to do because what did we uh, what did we do? We didn't really do anything. We actually didn't set up any um, devices or anything yet. So I'll leave that for part number two of this video here. So the next steps we'll have to do is to actually go and add in some storage on the virtual machine and then uh, go back into the management console here and get it set up hope you liked the video so far don't forget to subscribe so you'll be 
first to hear about part two of this video series.